Hello, Mick Jagger. Miriam, how are you? Thanks for joining us. So, everyone's Pleasure. very excited here. May the 17th, you're coming to Croke Park. You're actually kicking off your no-filter European tour here in Dublin, aren't you? Yes, starting in the west and going to the east. No, it should be fun. I, it should be really fun. And we haven't played in Ireland for ages, so really looking forward to coming. Actually, you played Ireland, I think, first in about 1965. You tell me, uh, yeah, Miriam. It um, was. Yes, we played in Dublin um, and we played in Belfast too, I think, on that little jaunt. And we played at the Adelphi Theatre, I think, and um, two shows. And um, it was good. I mean, it was a great crowd. I think it was quite crackers and, and mad, but I um, don't really remember very much about it. <laughs> You had a huge uh, show in Slane, actually, in 1982. Yeah, well, was, really, yeah. yeah, much later. What, what date are you saying that is? 82, actually. Yes. Yeah, that was the first time we played Slane. Um, and then we played it again, I think. In, in 2007. 2000. Um, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> they probably all blend a bit into one. You have been playing I Kind of gigs. do, but I remember the Slane shows really well because it was um, such a beautiful setting and so such a great you know night the last one i remember and it was such a beautiful evening it rained and then it became really night beautiful later on and then um i remember the chieftains were playing there on one of those slain shows mm. that was a very good very good night in slain actually you have sung the long black veil with the chieftains on the album of yes, the same name. I did. Yeah, I did do that. I do it sometimes at parties on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful song and it's a beautiful version you do on that album. Thank you. That's very kind of you. How did that I come about? about that, that I did with the Chieftains. I, was, I, was, I, I, I remember that album very well. That was a really good album they did, that particular one I loved. Did they just ask you to do it? Yeah, I knew them. You know, I knew them um, from... Well, I knew them, I think, through, through Gareth Brown. Mm. And, but I met um, Paddy Malone in, his ha- in uh, Gareth Brown's house, I think. Yeah. Um, and um, I saw him around Dublin and um, subsequently, and, you know, they just asked me to do it. And actually, it's funny you mention him, Mick, because not that long ago, I went to Gareth's beautiful house in Lugalaw and interviewed him with Paddy Maloney, who was always in the house there. But of yes. course, Gareth left this world not so long ago. Yes. You had great times in Lugalaw with Gareth, didn't you? I had some really great times in, in, with, um, with him. And then, um, you know, I, I always loved going to that house. And, and I know it's for sale now, which is just gonna, everything's going to change what everything does. But I had some great times with him and the Chieftains and walking the valley and everything. And at the Slane show... The last Lane show we did, I met Gareth by chance in a bar. And I said, are you coming to Slane? And he said, I did, he didn't know anything about it. So I said, okay, well, I get, I, so I got him all the passes and all the, you know, mm-hmm. VIP entrance things. And he drove there himself. And then just before I was going on stage, he, um, I got, I mean, it was really just before I got a message saying, do you know a Gareth Brown who's been stopped at a police roadblock? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. And he just about made the show. <laughs> in time. Oh, that's such a lovely story, actually. Yeah. And also, of course, Paddy Maloney, who we mentioned, he played Pipes and yeah. Whistle on a song, Party Doll, on the solo album Primitive yeah. Cool. Yeah, he did. He did, yes. So I, I used to, yeah, I used to hang around with him a lot. So, you know, it was great to have him on doing some of these things. And I used to pop in and out the studio and so on. Yeah, it was really, it was a really nice time. Very, very nice time. I know you've, uh, you're asked this question 300 million times a day, but you're gigging now for maybe five decades. Do you enjoy it as much? Mm. Do you enjoy it more? Do you enjoy it less? It's been difficult to make those kind of comparisons, but I still really enjoy it, you know. You know, you get a great night, get up there and have a great night and the audience is really giving you a lot of buzz. And, you know, I think it's just as enjoyable as playing, you know. Obviously, it was brand new when we played the Adelphi in whenever you say it was, 1965 or something. Yeah. And we played like six numbers and then went off. And it wasn't that difficult, really. Mm-hmm. And now it's a bit more, you know, longer and and um, a bit more taxing slightly. Mm. And if you get older, it doesn't get any easier playing sort of two hours plus or whatever but you know it's still really fun you know and uh, and um i don't think we'd do it if it wasn't i mean it, it, it's really enjoyable we had like the last tour we did the last um european tours we did were you know really a lot of fun
down. And so, you know, we just keep going doing it. And a bit like you too, who I know you're friendly with as well, you've kept together still as a band. Yeah. So how, how yeah. do you succeed in doing that after all this time? Well, it's not always easy mm. being a band, but, <laughs> but um, you know, you sort of rub along and make the most of it. And, you know, um, it, you know you, it, there's, there's like pluses and minuses, you know. But, you know, in the end, you know, you, when you get on stage and you're doing the music together, I think it all sort of gels and then you're, everyone's really happy in being there and it all works perfectly. And, you know, it, it, it's better than anything else. But like when you perform, I suppose one of your biggest songs for most people would still be Satisfaction. Obviously, you wrote that with Keith. But when you play that now and sing it, do you sing it differently as a, as an older guy than you would have as the younger Mick Jagger? Yeah, I'm sure I do. You know, I mean, I don't really, you know, I don't really think about it too mm. much. I mean, I usually do it as the end of the show, and you know, it's a part of audience participation, and you, you know what I mean. It's it's not obviously you don't think about it in the same way as you did in 1965 you know it's, it's a, a, in front of a big audience it's a slightly different thing um, and that applies to you know a lot of the songs but you you still have to put you know it's the, the hard thing is like if you're doing songs that you do a lot you, 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 you've got to remember and you've got to put emotion behind them you can't just do them by rote you know you've got to really get into them and, but you do you know it's, and you sing them to you know you sing them to people Mm. You, know, you can see the people you're singing them to, so you get like, you know, that that's the exchange of emotions. So that's what it's about. When you wrote that song, yeah. did you both realise how successful it was? Be I'm always interested when I interview people who have mm. huge hits that remain huge hits. Mm. When you wrote it, did uh, you know it would be that big? No, not when you wrote it. I mean, mm. when we did it, when we recorded it in the studio, I thought it was really hot. And um, but you, know, you didn't really know. You can't really know. I mean, you think it's uh, you've got something really good, but you can be sometimes right and wrong about that. But it, you know, it, it was very quickly, you know, a very big hit. So you, you, you know, a couple of weeks down the road. But when you wrote it, no, I don't think you really realise when you write something. You think, oh, that's hot. But you always like what you write because that's the sort of nature of the human human mind. You know, you got you got to love what you create, even if it's like you know, then then you. You always love what you've just done, and then mm. then uh, then you go back and you go, oh, that's really isn't quite as good as I thought. But you know, I've got something good. So you always like what you just write. So you never think, oh, this is like going to be. I think it's a bit. You can't predict it. Do you not look back though, very kindly now, in songs maybe you wrote in the sixties and thought, you know, they weren't bad. They weren't half bad at all. What we wrote. No, so I, I think lots of them were really good, and some of them mm. were rubbish. But I mean. <laughs> But mostly they were really good, and um, you know, in that, you know, you like you, we were working a lot then, you know, so it was all done in double quick time as well. You didn't have a lot of reflection time to think about it, so you just dashed them off and uh, hope for the best. And um, you know, considering all those pressures that you had of you know being on the road touring and doing a lot of other stuff, then I think that a lot of those songs were great. Is it impossible? It's like saying a favourite child. Do you have a favourite song if you, like, were forced to no. say a pain of no, death? I don't have a favourite. No, I really no. don't. Fair enough. No, I don't. I, I just, you know... I mean, I, I, you know, I like a lot of them, but I don't have a favourite. Do you feel as creative today as you were a few decades ago? I don't... I mean, I don't think you do things as quickly as you do when, you, when you're, when you like, 21. You do things much more quickly than when you're, like, whatever age I am. I don't want to think mm. about it, really. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I still do things. I mean, I still... Um, you know, yesterday I was doing... I was doing some... I'm doing some writing right now, so, you know, it's kind of an apposite question. But I can write things really quickly now. I mean... Mm. Um, uh, so... In a way, I'm still kind of happy. That makes me really happy that I can just sit down on guitar and just write something that just comes out, you know, in like half an hour, it's done, more or less. So I still do it, do it the same way as I did before. And so I'm kind of pleased about that. I don't really... I don't have any problems. I mean, a lot of people my age don't really write at all mm -hmm. and, or they have really problems and, they, you know, they take a lot of time. But I don't, I don't really have that. In the early days, of course, do you ever think back of them when you played 
in a basement club opposite Ealing Broadway Tube Station or even your first appearance in the marquee in July 62. Yeah. Did you think back then, oh, I think we're going to make it or were you just like most young people quite insecure? I was like torn because when we got a good audience, when we got a, played in a full up club in the marquee, the audience went crazy. So that the you know they they always loved it. So you always knew that we just needed to get a bit more exposure. You know, every time we got to do a club a, that was full up, you know, that people would really go for it. And then we knew we had something pretty early on. So yeah, we were pretty confident. You could have been a teacher, of course, because your dad and your granddad were teachers. I don't think I was a really, really good teacher, <laughs> like following in my father's footsteps. Mm. I didn't really want to be a teacher, and um, and um, my grandfather was a teacher as well, and uh, I didn't really want to be a teacher. I'm like, I don't have the patience for it. But you did go to the LSE for a while, didn't you? Well, yeah, but that's not your teacher. <laughs> no. I didn't learn very much at LSE, to be honest. No, i just been, you know, going through with my uh, uh, my son going to university and everything. So, you know, reliving my kind of, he, he, how his process was compared to mine in choosing colleges and everything. It's like um, a lot more informed than mine. When did you know you could sing? Was it in Dartford Grammar or was it in your own home? No, I was, yeah, when I was like 12 or 13. We're doing a lot in the past, Miriam. Um, <laughs> uh, um when I was about 12 or 13, I started singing and people seemed to like it, so I kept going. I was talking to Bob Geldof, actually, uh, okay. about a week ago. Um, and like you, yeah. he's kind of done a lot of many other things with his life, but he still regards his main job as the lead singer and frontman with the Rats. But for you, would you consider that's your main job? Like what you do with yeah, your that's pride moments? my main job. It's, my main job is to um, be, you know the cheerleader for this band and sing, you know, and, and get out there and entertain. That's my main job. And my other job is to write songs, really, and then I've got lots of other things that I have to do. They're, they're the most things that I like doing, is, is being out there and just gently cavorting. And, um, and, I, and I said to Teddy before, I love, I love writing, and, you know, so that's, that's what I do. Do you have any rituals or routines? Like before you play Croke Park here on May 17th, yeah. for instance, your voice, which is still really good, do you do things to make sure that's strong? Oh, yeah, because everyone has a routine, you know. Yeah, I have lots of routines, you know. That What's yours? Before the show, you know, and the whole day of the show is a routine, really. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like a programmed thing, and you know certain things you have to do, and you, you know, have to have a food at some early time and then you know go and check the stage and make sure it's you know even though you rely on your crew you know want to see it all and check it's not like bits of it aren't falling down <laughs> stuff like that you're going to be safe on it and um and then you do you know your warm-up physical warm-up routine a vocal warm-up routine and then you choose your outfits and stuff, stuff like that so it all goes you know so according to a plan you feel comfortable too. But I don't I don't have any superstitions or anything like that. Do you do anything to mind your voice? Yeah, I mean I warm up the voice for like 45 minutes uh, mm. before the show. So hopefully I'll make it through. You've got when I was saying I was interviewing, I mean, you still have loads of fans, but when, at your concerts, who are your fans mainly when you look out at them? I don't I have I don't I mean I see some people I see that follow us around everywhere and they have flags and stuff. Mm. And so I know them, uh, but you know, there's a very mixed bunch. It's a uh, it's a very mixed group of ages and types, and there's all types, you know. We're, and it depends where you go, obviously. And um, you know, we have different kinds of age groups depending where we go, and you know, so it's very, very mixed and very broad. I think. Why do you think the band has stayed enduringly popular? You know, I'm probably Miriam the. Mm last person that really knows the answer to that question and um i mean it's a bit mind-boggling if you think about it and it's not something to be taken for granted i think and uh why would you still you know after all this time and there's so many musicians out there and there's so many great ones and there's so many people with great songs and 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 uh, why would you still be in any way um, in demand, it's really a mystery, but I'm very thankful for it. However, the 
mystery unfolds, I'm I'm very thankful that people still come along. You know, so it's brilliant for me. Do you think you've been lucky in your life? Yeah, very lucky, super lucky, and um, I'm very blessed by it. So I'm very pleased, and I'm looking forward to, very much to coming to Croke Park, the first gig, and doing a really good one. And everyone yeah. here is looking forward to you coming too. One last question. Would, yeah. would you think your 20-year-old self, what do you think he would think of Mick today? Um, probably, <laughs> so you, I can't believe you're doing this, but good luck on you. <laughs> and for people going to your concert, what can they expect in the Crow Park gig? I think they know what to expect. <laughs> Um, well, I hope it's a really great show and a really up show, and I think they're really good, enthusiastic, and I'm sure the Irish crowd will give us, you know, push us the best luck and 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 be a really roaring crowd for us, and we'll try and give it back to you. Okay, well, look, Mick Jagger, thank you very much for speaking to me Thanks, today. Miriam. We look forward to seeing you on the 17th of May in Croke Park. Thank you, Miriam. Take care. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye.